I think UPS opened my box. Because when I opened this awesome box from Uncle Labs, I saw two devices. But I noticed this one was already opened. Oh well. Today, we're going to talk about two switches. Not this one, but this one. I was keeping my eye on this device because I really wanted one. I was reached out to and said, one's on the way for you. I wasn't expecting this one. When I opened the box, I was like, whoa, sweet. Now I have two switches to play with. Not only can I can play with it, but I can learn it and help people on the forums. But my curiosity got to me. I wonder how loud this switch really is. I'm going to open it up, put it on my box or my desk here, and we're going to connect it to PF Sense. I have a optical DAC cable here that we're going to try and see if it uh, likes that or not and go from there. But first, we need to open it. I didn't open it all the way fully. The only thing I did was look at the brown box on the top. So let's look and see what comes in here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this does look like Unify packaging. Maybe they're uh, copying that because it's so good. Don't know. So we have our little pamphlet with a QR code on the front. It says, scan for quick start guide. For my bad eyes, there is no way I could read this, but I will trust that there's a QR code that works on the front of this pamphlet. Inside, we have our screws, but we'll go over that in a second because there's something in here that I'm very, very excited about. We have our IEC power cord. Two nice, ooh. Hey, that's a nice color too. That's gray. Ooh, I like that. But in here, I'm very excited to see what's in here. In the instructions manual, it says that it comes with rack studs. I will link down below my video that I did, or maybe somewhere up here if I could figure out how to do that in YouTube. The video that I did on nuts. Oh, they do too. Look at that. Oh, I'll have to do a quick video of how to install these in my rack over there because uh, I'm definitely going to be installing those. So inside, we have our rack studs, 2U or 1U pieces with the nice nuts that go on the front. Nuts. Then we have the screws. <gasps> oh. Don't want to lose those. Need those. Inside here for the ears. We'll put those on after. And then... The brown box. Now let's look at the switch. That's packaged very, very well. Put the phone back in the box because then put the switch on top of it. See if I can hold this. Let's see if we can drop this new switch. So on the front, we have from one to 16 is highlighted with 16 ports for PoE. And then the other eight are just non-PoE, but they're all one gigabit. We do see two SFP plus ports, another one gig or 10 gig. That's nice to see. Kind of wish there was more, but maybe another revision later on in the future, they'll add more, but that's nice. Yeah, smells new too. Curious to see what this looks like when it starts up too. Okay, well, let's plug it in and see. Grab my access point and plug it in here and see what it does. So, okay, let's see here. That's loud. You guys hear that? Yeah? It is booting, so we'll give it a minute. As that's happening, I'm gonna grab the access point and plug in the cable, so hold on. It's actually ramped right down the white light is on, so maybe that means it's booted. Let's plug it in and see what it does. Now, this is just a 10 gig or 10 G Tech optical DAC cable. It's about 55 feet and it's 10 gig. So let's see. Well, it didn't like my SFP to optical cable 
and it didn't like these um, 10G Tech transceivers. Let's see if a firmware um, fixes that by adding it to the controller and see what it does. I'll try that again. But as you can tell, it's silent. So maybe it's fully booted and maybe it needs firmware or something. So let's jump in and see what that does. We're back online and it does see the switch. So let's see what happens here. Let's go set up. Oh, and I do see a firmware button there. So that might cure our problem. So let's see here. I'm going to name this main switch. And there's a firmware. So let's do that first. We want to do that right now. 100% update complete. So let's just check our network, make sure everything's fine here. Oh, it's rebooting. So that must mean it's doing firmware. Hold. We must wait. Now I like the fact that this is rebooting and it doesn't reset the PoE on the port. That's a good thing. Okay, it's online. That didn't take too long. Our website can't be researched reached because it's refreshed. Okay, so we have firmware. Let's refresh this one more time. So now let's unplug it again and see if we can get this optical receiver working. Still no luck on any of the SFP modules, but I'm going to reset my switch or my, I'm going to reset PF sense and see if that does anything. If that doesn't work, we'll have to go back to one gig uplink. Hold. Okay, so the opticals are working. Might have made a mistake where maybe it wasn't working because the lights aren't showing up. So I wonder if I have to go into the switch and look at any settings. The switch ports haven't populated yet. But that's okay. So I've changed my SFP optical cable and it's working. Just no lights on here. So I'm just gonna wait and see if these ports show up in a couple minutes because it's probably doing like an inventory to see what's plugged in and stuff. Maybe there's a light or something we have to change. The lights on the front of this don't show link activity on the SFP. I'm not sure why. Um, I'll research that part later. But all my optical and my other DACs work. Even my optical DAC and my transceivers for one gig and 10 gig work. Led me down the path that maybe something wasn't working because the lights weren't going. But I saw this light flickering, which led me to go, hmm, am I getting network activity? So I went to fast.com and I'm online just fine. But the lights weren't on. So I don't know. We'll figure that out later on. So as we go back to our switch or our main interface here for the dashboard, we can see that I have devices on here. We can see that the switch is here. Switch has been up and running. We can click on it. Hey, there's our ports. Took maybe about a minute or so. Just as I was finishing and pausing the other part of the video, I went downstairs, came back upstairs for a second there, and this was popped up. So this does take about 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute to populate because it does an inventory of all the ports and then they work. As you can see right here, port 25 is lit up and that's my main link. And this is going to my little black PF sense box over there. I'll put a picture of the setup here in a minute. And there to go. One thing I wanted to try was VLANs. So I created some simple VLANs, guest voice, by just clicking on this. We can just create a VLAN, call it maybe 500. We'll give it a name, test, and then we'll add it. Now, I know 100 works because I've made that on my PFSense. So if we log into my PFSense here, 102.168.1.1, and we go min. Sorry, I have a new keyboard, so it might be a little black, my bad. And we go to interfaces, guest, we'll see that there is a guest VLAN there and it should give us out a 100 IP address. This should be, I hope, easy to figure out how to do. 
Now, I'm going to plug my laptop in. 19 is showing up. I'm going to click on that. It looks like we can give that a name. So we're going to call it MacBook Pro. Oops. Uh, MacBook Pro save uh, mode. So we got standard, 802, disable mirror. Oh, we can mirror a port too. Okay. Uh, native VLAN. Uh, uh, allow VLANs? All? Select none. Save. Uh, native default. Let's type in 100 and see what happens. 100. Save. So it was at, might have changed by now. So what do we got for an IP address now? Network. We have no link. Oh, now we got link. So it must turn the port off and turn it back on. Hey, well that was simple. That's very simple to put a VLAN on this switch. Like, holy. Main switch port number 19. That's pretty sweet. So main switch and port. Um, number one. Oh, hey, we could power cycle. I don't want to do that right now because I'll lose internet access, but power cycle, that's pretty easy to find. Temperature. Oh, that's pretty neat. So you could tell how... Is this switch warm? Oh, it's actually really cold. Um, put the ears on it. Eh, you guys probably noticed that, but point it out. Put the ears on there. I want to check one more thing here. So if I go here and go switch settings... The LED, I'm going to put this over here. The LED you can change on the front of this. Purple. What happens if we change it to default? What's default color? Oh, no. That's the uh, unified default color. No, 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 no. We'll change that back to What's turquoise look like? Not that I'm going to keep it on that, but what's turquoise look like? Okay, maybe you could change colors so you can know which switch is different colors so you can find them easy. I always put a label on the front of them, but let's go back to the purple and save that. Huh? Huh? Go back to purple? Ooh, that's nice. I like that. Matches the purple in their, uh, the letter A, so I'm going to keep it like that. Well, that's a pretty cool thing. The only thing I'm bummed about is the lights, but, I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me. That's not that bad. So what do we have on the front here? So, orange light, you guys should be able to see that. If not, then I'll take a video and show you. But uh, the orange light is PoE. Blue light, oh, it says it over here. Or blue light is gigabit. And no light means there's no link, obviously. I wonder if it says anything in the manual for that. So let's go to products, switches. Uh, okay, yeah, so it shows we can link these two devices together. Uh, run restricted speeds, okay. Ah, there's that picture I saw with the rack studs in there. I'm gonna mount this later and show you guys that. Um, so this is a switch I have, the Switch 24 PoE. We have 24 ports, 16 of them are PoE, two SFP plus, and 250 or 240 watts of power. That's a lot of power. So let's see something here. Let's go to Quick Start, Quick Start, Data Sheet, Quick Start. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Oh yeah, the app, I forgot about the app. So these are what we get in the box. We've got the ears, the screws, a rack stud, duos. That's the name of those things. I forgot what they were, the duos. And it has the nuts, nuts. Uh, the SFP port plugs. I wonder why they would put that in here, but maybe that's because of everything that comes with it. Uh, we recommend using the included mounting harbor for product installation. Well, okay. Uh, let's see here, does it say anything about the port colors? Uh, the Alta Labs LED flashes as a unit is powered up. Once fully booted, the LED will remain lit unless turned off in the UI. Oh, 
Can we turn it off in the UI? LED, orange. Oh, we can too. I think somebody asked about that in the forums. We can actually turn the LED off. I don't want to turn it off because I like the, the color purple. It looks really nice. But what else? Um, the LED color can be also changed in management interface. Yeah, I just showed that. Um, okay, here we go. This is what I wanted to see. Ports 1 to 16 support 802.3ATPOE+, with up to 30 watts per port. Budget of 240 watts. These ports are standard gigabit Ethernet ports from 10, 10 100, and a gigabit. Link LED on the left indicates 10 100, amber, okay, and blue indicates 1 gig. So we got blue and it's flashing because there's network activity. PoE light on the right will eliminate amber when there's power. Sweet. Port 17 to 24 standard gigabit ports that are connected at 10, 100, 1 gigabit connections. Uh, okay. And you know what? I got an idea. Because I have my favorite tool here with me, my Navitech NT Pro. This will test our gigabit ports. Let's plug it into seven. We'll plug this in. Heh, we got quick link too, that's pretty nice. Like, right now. PoE, 53 volts. Oh, four, 54 volts, changed. It will tell me, it says Alta. So it knows that it's the Alta switch. I will put the test results on the screen when I'm done here and show you all the information that the PoE shows us. That's pretty sweet. I like that. Um, so it says right here, the SFP ports support fiber optics and ethernet transceivers with one gigabits, 2.5, five gigahertz, or 10. Oh, I just learned something right there. I didn't know it did all four of those. Anything else I could tell you about? I just got the switch a couple hours ago, so I don't really know much about it. And I didn't read anything about it because I wasn't expecting it quick. So I'm new to this just like you guys. Uh, adding it to the portal. I mean, adding it to the portal, all I did was click add and it was there, as you guys saw, setting it up. I'm going to leave my video at that and um, let you guys uh, ask more questions. I'm going to learn about the product and uh, hopefully inform you guys of what goes on with the product. So hopefully that helped you. Like and subscribe, maybe? I don't know anymore. Just... I'm going to go enjoy wearing my shirt, so you guys have a great night. See you later.